Let's get started on the vSphere web client. In this section, we will log in to vCenter server using the vSphere web client. We will do a brief tour of the vSphere web client, and we will perform common administrative tasks using the vSphere web client. The vSphere web client is a piece of software that is used to connect to a vCenter server, which is used to manage multiple virtual machines on multiple ESXi hosts, which connect to multiple data stores. The vSphere web client allows us to manage a vSphere virtual network infrastructure. So what's the difference between the vSphere web client and the traditional vSphere client. Most of you are familiar with the traditional vSphere client. It's used to perform most common administrative tasks such as creating a virtual machine or creating a clone. And it is typically installed on the network administrator's workstation at work. But what if you're not at work? What if you are at a cyber cafe? And what if you're using a computer which is not your own? Well, the vSphere web client allows you to connect to a vCenter server over the internet using a standard web browser. It also implements other new features, such as the ability to implement virtual hardware version 10. The vSphere web client allows us to manage our vCenter server over the internet. So now let's log on to the vCenter server using the vSphere web client. You use an internet browser such as Chrome or Internet Explorer or Firefox, and then you download the client integration plugin, and then you log on to vCenter. So typically, we like to use Chrome. That is the browser that works best with VMware. I click on Chrome, and then I type in either the IP address or the URL of uh, the vCenter server, followed by the port number, which is 94. 43. And we get an error message that says the connection is not private because we have not set up certificates. We click on proceed. And then before we type in the username and password, notice on the bottom left hand corner, download the client integration plugin. If we click on that, it then downloads the client integration plugin. And then after it's downloaded, we click on it to, uh, to initialize it, and we see welcome to the installation wizard for the VMware client integration plugin. And it says before we can go any farther, we have to close any browsers which are currently open, such as Google Chrome or the Internet Explorer. So I will close my browser. Okay, then I will click on retry, and I am at the uh, VMware client integration plugin installation wizard. I click on next and I accept the licensing agreement followed by next. Then I accept the default installation location followed by next. Then I click on install and it proceeds to install the VMware client integration plugin. Installation is complete. I click on finish and I do not have to reboot. Then I go back to Google Chrome and I type in the URL or IP address from my vCenter server, followed by the port number, 9443. And then I type in my username. For, for us, it's administrator at vSphere.local, followed by the password. I click on login. It authenticates me to the vCenter server. And now I am connected to the vCenter server using the vSphere web client. Welcome to the VMware vSphere web client. Notice there are four parts to the vSphere web client screen. Number one is the navigator pane. 
Two is the content area where we will be doing most of our work. Three is where we can search for objects in the inventory, such as virtual machines or data stores. And four is where we will see global information, such as work in progress. So let's do a brief tour of the vSphere web client, and you're going to see things which you're already familiar with. We will look at the data center, ESXi hosts, virtual machines, data stores, and V switches. So we go to the vSphere web client, to the home page, and we click on vCenter. And then under vCenter, we have multiple vCenter servers. I click on multiple vCenter servers, and there is our vCenter server for CCBC. I click on that, and then I can see there is our data center. I click on the data center, and a data center is made up of hosts. I click on hosts, and we can see there are three hosts in this data center. So let's look at the first host, the one ending in dot .11. I click on that, and it gives me the summary information for this host. And I can see that it's a Dell Power Edge 12 CPUs and 256 gig of RAM. If I click on the monitor tab, I can see how hard the CPU is working. If I click on the resource allocation button, I can see which virtual machines have been assigned high or low shares. If I click on the hardware status button, I can see no problems there. Processor, memory, power supply, everything is looking good in the hardware status. If I click on the Manage tab, I can enter the license keys for either the ESXi host or for the vCenter server. Under Security Profile, I can configure the incoming and the outgoing firewall connections. I can configure how services start up, and I can configure lockdown mode. If I click on the networking button, I can see I have one virtual switch and several port groups. If I click on the storage button, we can see I have several hard disks, one of which is two terabytes in size. On the left column, we can see that on this ESXi host, there are multiple virtual machines. If we click on the virtual machines, we can see the machines which are on this host. Here's one called File Server 1. If I click on File Server 1, I then get summary information for the virtual machine called File Server 1 has two CPUs, 8 gig of memory, and a 40 gig hard disk. If I click on the monitor tab, I can look at the performance, and I can see for CPU utilization, this, this virtual machine is not working hard at all. If I click on the Manage tab, here is my virtual hardware. So I could allocate additional CPUs. I could allocate more RAM. I could add a second virtual hard disk, I could change the, the network that this virtual machine is connected to. If I select the Related Objects tab, we can see here are two data stores, Data Store 1 and the SAN data store. Let's click on Data Store 1 and select Summary and we can see that this data store has a 2.45 terabyte capacity. If we click on the monitor tab, we can see there's lots of free space on this data store, and we can see how much space is being taken by each virtual machine. If I click on the Manage tab, I can see the folders for each virtual machine and the files that correspond to each virtual machine. For example, here is the VMX file, which is a configuration file for a virtual machine. And here is the VMDK file, which is the virtual hard disk file for a virtual machine. 
If I go back to the navigation pane and select left, and I go back to my ESXi host, and I go under networks, we can see we currently have one virtual switch and several port groups. So this concludes our brief tour of the vSphere web client. We looked at a data center, ESXi hosts, virtual machines, data stores, and the virtual switch. Now, let's use the vSphere web client to perform common administrative tasks. We will first create a virtual machine, and then add a virtual hard disk to the virtual machine, and then we will configure VM options to force it to boot to the BIOS setup. Then we will create a port group, and a clone, and a resource pool, and a cluster. We will use the host and cluster view, and we will monitor performance. So let's start out with creating a virtual machine. Creating a virtual machine in the vSphere web client is nearly identical to creating a virtual machine in the traditional vSphere client. You create the virtual machine, meaning you allocate CPU, RAM, and virtual hard disk space. You install the operating system, you install VMware tools, and then you assign the server name and you assign the IP address. So let's go to the vSphere web client, and if I select vCenter server on the left, and I select vCenter servers, and I select our vCenter server, I can see there is virtual machines, and if I click on virtual machines, and these are the existing virtual machines running on this ESXi host, and notice there is an icon right here that says create a new virtual machine. If I click on create virtual machine, it brings up the new virtual machine wizard. I will select create a new virtual machine followed by next. Then I will give the virtual machine a name such as file server one and it will be saved on data store, data store one, data center one it'll be installed on the ESXi host ending in dot 11 and it will be stored on data store 1 followed by next now if I wanted to I could configure it to be backwardly compatible with older versions of VMware but since I do not have any older software being installed then I will select the current version followed by next then I specify the type of operating system that I will install in this virtual in this virtual machine. In this case, it's Windows 2008 Server 64-bit, followed by Next. And then I want to assign additional CPUs, so I select the drop-down, and I will assign two virtual CPUs. Then, under Memory, I will assign 8 gig of memory to this virtual machine. And under the hard disk, I'm not going to change the size, but I will configure the disk provisioning to be thin provisioned because as you know, then it doesn't really take up data, doesn't really take up space on the data store until data is actually saved to that disk. So we select thin provision. We click on next and we click on finish and there is our newly created file server. If I click on the summary tab for that virtual machine I can see it has two virtual CPUs and an 8 gig of memory and a virtual hard disk so I've configured the hardware, but I still have yet to install the operating system. So the next thing to do is now to install Windows 2008 Server. But before I do, I first have to configure the virtual machine to boot to the DVD. So to do that, I go down to the bottom middle of the screen and select Edit Virtual Machine Settings. Under DVD, I select the drop-down, 
and under device I select host device meaning I'm going to put the Windows server install disk into the DVD which is in the ESXi host. I remember to click the checkbox that says connected power on followed by OK. So now let's start the virtual machine. I click on actions and I click power on and when I do it should boot to the DVD and begin the install process. So let's look at that. If I select launch console, I'll click on launch console and it brings another tab across the top and now I can see that virtual machine and I can see that the Windows Server install process has already begun. And then we see starting Windows and we select the language for Windows Server followed by next. We select install now. We see setup is starting. We select the edition of Windows Server we want to install which in this case is Windows 2008 2. I click on next. I accept the licensing agreement followed by next. Under the installation type I select custom. Install a new copy of Windows. I select that and then I select the 40 gig virtual hard disk that I previously created followed by next and then it proceeds to copy the files from the installation DVD to the virtual hard disk on the virtual machine. And then it reboots. Setup is preparing your computer for first use. And now it says the user's password must be changed. They mean the administrator's password. I click on OK. I type in the password the first time. I confirm the password. Click on Next. Changing password. Your password has been changed. I click on OK. It welcomes me and now I can see that I am uh, logged in to this newly installed Windows 2008 server. Now let's go back over to the, the top left to the vSphere web client to look at the virtual machine view and we can see that yes I have the operating system installed but VMware Tools is not yet installed on the virtual machine. So to install VMware Tools I click on install VMware Tools and what it does is it mounts the installation DVD for VMware Tools on the virtual machine. I click on mount. Then I go back to the virtual machine and we can see that the install program has already initiated. I select run setup64.exe. Welcome to the installation wizard for VMware Tools. I click on next. We select typical installation followed by next and we click on install. Then it copies the files for VMware Tools. VMware Tools has been set up. We click on finish and we have to reboot the virtual machine. We click on yes, shuts down, it reboots, starting Windows, press Control alt delete to log in. Notice on the upper right hand corner there is a button for send control alt delete. Click on that and it sends control alt delete to the virtual machine. Then I can type in the password for the administrator. And then the next thing to do as you know when you install the operating system is to provide a computer name and domain name. So I will select change for computer name and I will give it a computer name file server 1 and the DNS suffix will be of course ccbcmd.edu and it reminds me that I've got to reboot for these changes to take effect and I don't want to reboot just yet I'll select restart later I still have yet to configure networking because this is still a DHCP client I select configure networking right click on the network adapter followed by properties TCP IP v4 properties and I select use the following IP address then I type in the IP address followed by the subnet mask and the default gateway 
and the DNS server. Click on OK and close and close and then of course I have to reboot for these changes to take effect. I click on start, I select restart, I click on OK. It shuts down and restarts that Windows 2008 server. Starting Windows and then for Control Alt Delete I click on the button on the upper right hand corner that says send Control Alt Delete. Type in the administrator's password and then now I have assigned the computer name and IP address. On the top left, let's go to the vSphere web client, and now we can see we're running Windows 2008 server, VMware Tools is installed, there's the DNS name, and the IP. So what we did was we used the vSphere web client to create a virtual machine, to install the operating system, to install VMware tools, and then to assign a DNS name and assign an IP address to the virtual machine. Very similar to the traditional vSphere client. In the next section, we will use the vSphere web client to perform other common administrative tasks. And this concludes 